Hello, I'm Victoria Fritz. Let's take a look at how markets in Europe have ended the trading session. And it's riskier assets like equities that have had a pretty difficult couple of weeks. And they've been undermined by some of those concerns about a potential rise of US interest rates, also the outcome of the US elections, Britain's departure from the EU. And just to try and top everything off, we've also got problems about the health of the German and Italian banks that are worrying people as well. So let's do some of the big picture stuff first. Where is monetary policy heading and how is it diverging across the world? Well, a rate hike in December is now being priced in in America. Now, this looks to be because of a sustained strength in the labour market. The number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits hit a 43-year low last week, and the Federal Reserve is looking for signs of a sustained and stable recovery in the real economy before they pull any trigger on rates. Well, world stocks, as you can see, were stumbling to their lowest level in a month. We heard news of a sharp decline in Chinese exports, and that's really revived some concerns about the health of the world's second biggest economy. Weaker metals prices translate to lower values for mining stocks, which then translate to lower uh, values for the FTSE 100 because it makes up a big chunk of the index, so it drags it down when they are lower. And there was no reprieve for Britain's pound uh, as though it fell through 121.50 against the dollar at one point and about 90p to the euro. Now, you should be able to see the current value along the bottom of your screen, somewhere down there. And it's Sterling's fall that is very much responsible for the spat between Britain's biggest retailer, you can see them here, Tesco, and its biggest supplier, Unilever. Now, the spat sent both of those uh, shares in those companies down. You can see Tesco down almost 3% and the same over Unilever as well, close to 3%. Joining me now is James Bevan. He's the Chief Investment Officer at CCLA Investment Management. He joins us from the city. James, let's start with Tesco. Why does a weaker sterling make Marmite more expensive? Well, there are two aspects to this. First of all, there is the genuine issue that as the pound goes down, so goods and products that are brought in from overseas are going to be more expensive. But there is a second issue, which is that, of course, all companies are facing a real squeeze on profitability right now. Unilever had its own results today. It confirmed that uh, the overall numbers are being helped by pricing and not volumes. Volumes are hard to come by. Everybody wants faster margins. People will want to try and get prices prices up if they can. Uh, let's talk about what's going on more generally in the world stock market, just because I think everyone's had enough of Marmite on the news channel for, for one day. Um, we're seeing the stocks fall right across the world, the Dow down about 0.65% uh, at the moment. And it's these concerns about China, isn't it? Yet again, September exports down uh, to their weakest level for some time. China is far and away the most important part of the economic picture, which is getting more gloomy. Uh, they certainly had difficult export numbers and import numbers. That means we should realistically brace ourselves for the Chinese authorities trying to get the Chinese currency to become weaker. Now, that sort of sounds like it might be good news. But on the other hand, what it does mean is that we have a greater increased risk of deflation. And deflation is bad news for stock markets because it typically means that profits will fall. So bad news from China, which has, of course, been the locomotive for global growth in recent years. Now, lots of people have been talking about whether or not we're going to get a rate hike in the United States this year or not. Looks like November is pretty unlikely, but, you know, a, set, a December rate rise looks very much more in focus. Investors seem to be pricing it in, and it's having an effect on the dollar, isn't it? And also having an effect on some of the stock markets as well. Yeah, I think people overplay this whole issue of monetary policy tightening in the States. Uh, the Open Market Committee, which is the body in America that determines policy, is continuing to send a fairly mixed message. But if you read the tea leaves carefully, what they are essentially saying is that they are minded to increase rates, but oh so slowly. So if we do get a quarter point rise, which is what is broadly expected in December, we shouldn't expect much more than a quarter point rise throughout the whole of next year. Now, that's hardly tightening rates uh, uh, at breakneck speed. Uh, certainly not, is it? Uh, James, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much, Thank James you. Bevan, in the city for us. Now, as James is saying, over in the United States, there are lots of stories going on at the moment, but oil prices have been falling back yet again. Unexpectedly, stockpiles of oil in the US have climbed for the first time in six weeks, and, uh, and it's had a bit of an effect on the prices of oil. Actually, these have just risen in the last 15 minutes alone. And, of course, the big story again in the United States, when could we see a rate rise? New data shows that employers remain pretty reluctant 
reluctant to lay off workers. The pool of potential job candidates has been drying up in the US and openings remain near record highs. And that's exactly the sort of conditions that mean that people can ask for more money when they're in their wage negotiations. And that is exactly what policymakers have been waiting for before they start raising interest rates. The economy has got to be able to cope with rate rises if and when they happen. Now, don't forget a full roundup of all the other business stories is always available on the website. If you are worried about what's going on with the pound, this is a good article to go and have a look at. It's by Rebecca Marston, Who's Afraid of the Falling Pound? BBC.co.uk forward slash business. Thanks, Victoria. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much.